it's not a good visiting time, but you got to do it. Good morning. Begin and member Natalie Chambers to come forward and to light the chalice, and we will um, say in unison the words that are printed in your order of service. With this flame, we renew our commitment to justice, peace, and compassion. Thank you. Okay, and now can everybody stand as you are willing and able to sing the affirmation, which is also in your order of service. sit down yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is the time in the service where we're going to greet one another. So please um, say hello to people who are around you. And then if you'd like to come forward to wave to the people who are Hi, everybody from Hi, California. Everyone. Oh, hello Good. from California. Althea, you got to un you got to um, unmute yourself. <laughs> Hi, Jane. Hi, Hi Susan. You Sending you really good thoughts and wishes. I didn't know if your brother would be attending with you today. No, I'm not. I'm at my niece's house. Ah. So I'll be taking him to the UU Church in Kingston next week, hopefully. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. Hi, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you, We get to hang with you, the people on the on the Zoom. Right. It's, it's right. nice hanging. <laughs> this I is so up. wonderful that we have these Hi. options. Isn't it? I know. I know. It's great. I love Amazing. seeing you guys. Yep. Hi, Paula. Hi, Paula. <laughs> John. I'm glad you clarified which Susan was on the committee because, as you know, we Here have Here and wave to the camera in the corner so that people on Zoom can say hello. <laughs> hello. Hi, everyone. I'm glad they do that. <laughs> nice. okay, okay, back to mute. Bye guys. And actually, um, we're gonna sing a hymn now too. <laughs> so, <laughs> in the in the teal hymnal number one oh one seven, building a new way. You can um, stand or sit as you prefer.
Okay, now you can sit. <laughs> um, now is the time for the story for all ages. Um, so Leah and Bo and, and Charlie. Charlie can come up and anybody else who feels young at heart and wants to see the pictures. <laughs> you can also look at the picture on the front of your order of service, which the story kind of matches. Um, what do you do with the problem? I love this book. It's really great. Bo, come over here. You can see the pictures. I don't know how it happened. Author Kobe Yamada, illustrated by Mae Bessem. I don't know how it happened, but one day I had a problem. I didn't want it. I didn't ask for it. I really didn't like having a problem, but it was there. There's the picture of the problem. Um, oh, we can't see inside of it. Only this guy knows what it is. This is what it feels like, a little dark cloud. Why is it here? What does it want? What do you do with the problem, I thought. I wanted to make it go away. I shoot it. I scowled at it. I tried ignoring it, but nothing worked. I started to worry about my problem. What if it swallows me up? What if my problem sneaks up and gets me? What if it takes away all of my things? I worried a lot. I worried about what would happen. I worried about what could happen. I worried about this and I worried about that. And the more I worried, the bigger my problem became. I couldn't take it anymore. This has to stop, I declared. Maybe I was making my problem bigger and scarier than it actually was. After all, my problem hadn't really swallowed up or attacked me. I realized that I had to face it. Is this a real bear or is this an elf? <laughs> Is an elf? Look at his big I think it's an elf. Even though I didn't want to, even though I was really afraid, I got ready and tackled my problem. When I got face to face with it, I discovered something. My problem wasn't what I thought it was. I discovered it had something beautiful inside. My problem held an opportunity. It was an opportunity for me to learn and grow, to be brave, to do something. It showed me that it was important to look closely because some opportunities only come once. So now I see problems differently. I'm not afraid of them anymore because I know their secret. Every problem has an opportunity for something good. You just have to look for it. The end. everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, we're going to do meditation um, now. We're now in the time of the service where um, we do meditation. Um, and last week I was speaking to someone and they said this meditation is hard because they're used to taking it in for themselves and releasing it into the universe. And this is a toddler medication. So this meditation is to help the community. Um, and and so instead of taking in um, good stuff and releasing bad stuff, you're taking in the pain of the community and releasing good stuff into the community. Um, so let's go with that. It is an ancient Buddhist practice and it's designed to awaken compassion for others. Please 
as you were able, sit comfortably in your chair, your back to the to your chair, your feet on the floor, um, and rest your mind. Make your mind as still as possible. Awaken your heart. Open it. Make it spacious. With each out breath, we send them relief. Breathe in for all of us and breathe out for all of us. Breathe in, feeling heat, darkness, and heaviness. Breathe out coolness, brightness, and light. Instead of looking away from your neighbors, your community, and the world's pain, you look towards that pain. Breathe in staleness. Breathe out freshness. Breathe in, taking in completely negative energy through all your pores. Breathe out, radiating positive energy, emptying your lungs completely, radiating it through all your pores. Breathe in anger, breathe out peace. Breathe in, breathe out. And if you find yourself getting anxious or worried, breathe in that anxiety and that worry or that stuck. And breathe out confidence, calm, and movement. Breathe in bigger for your neighbor. Breathe out deeper for your community. Breathe in hate. Breathe out love. Breathing in, we are the prayer. Breathing out, we are the healing. Breathing in, we are the love. Breathing out, we are the peace. Breathing in, we are the hope. Breathing out, we are the justice. May we know our strength. May we be filled with courage. And may our love flow from us into the world. Amen. May it be so. Blessed be. And now, without looking at the hymnal, because you know this one, please sing Spirit of Life. And if you look, need to look at the hymnal, it's number 123.
Knowing that the joys and sorrows of life connect us all, we ask that the load get lighter, knowing that you are held in the hearts of this community. Now we have another hymn to read or to sing together. Um, number 44 in the gray hymnal, we sing of golden mornings. Good morning. Um, can I tell you this is weird? Because I'm talking to the peace sign um, and I can't see you all. So um, it's it feels strange. Uh, but I'm so happy to be with you this morning. And I'm sorry that I'm unable to be with you in person. Um, I've been putting off a series of medical things and um, my doctor um, insisted that I get those done. So for the next two days, I'm gonna be doing hospital things. Today, I wanted to be brief um, because um, you have such an important meeting after service. As I thought about all that is happening at this church this month, I wondered how people are feeling. I wondered whether you're feeling overwhelmed, um, whether you're feeling comfortable with the changes, um, how are you handling all of this? There's going to be a change in the makeup of the Board of Trustees at the end of the month with three new members coming on board. There's a new transition team that has been constructed. It will be responsible for helping us through something like a strategic planning process that will include looking at the covenant, which outlines our shared values, examining the, it, it, will, it will examine and maybe look at the covenant, which outlines our, our values shared, examining the mission, which says who we are or who we want to be in the world. Um, it will hopefully lead some re to some revelations about who we are as a community and how and what and, and we need to do as we set the, the, the new direction for the ministerial selection process. New beginnings offer a chance to acknowledge what has happened in the past, but it turns out attention towards possibilities for the future. Dolly Parton says every beginning allows us to find out who we are and do it on purpose. In many ways, these new groups, your fellow congregants represent the total congregation. They have had the same experiences of you all. They have felt similar feelings and are very committed to this church community. Some of, of them have literally been loving on this church for years. 
Richard Rohr, a Franciscan friar and ecumenical teacher, has a weekly meditation that I subscribe to. This week's caught my eye because it was dedicated to paradoxes. A few examples he used was Mary, who was described as Jesus's mother and a virgin. Jesus himself, who was described, described as human and divine. The Eucharist, which is told, said to be the body of Jesus, and it's also bread. There is the killed yet alive, the powerless but powerful, um, all in the Bible. I've tried to come up with non-biblical possibilities, non-biblical paradoxes. Um, how about bittersweet or sweet and sour or tired but invigorated? And what about simply new beginnings? Are these troubling concepts? These two opposites in the same thought? I wonder, can you all think of any of these examples? No? Father Rohr argues that dualistic thinkers those who only see good, bad, black, white, or negative, positive, I've met a lot of these folks at the UUs, have difficulties with paradoxes. He argues that the ability to hold paradoxes, that is the ability to dwell in grace, facilitates the journey to love. Quoting him, the history of spirituality tells us we must learn to accept paradoxes or we will never love anything or see it correctly. He furthers writes that we must learn to live with paradoxes or we cannot live peacefully or happily or even a single day of our lives. He suggests that one cannot be wise, forgiving or possess patience without embracing paradox. I would like to add that without tolerating paradoxes, we cannot center love. As the church enters this next phase with new leadership and new roles and new responsibilities, we will need to tolerate paradoxes. We have to have an open heart and an open mind because the work that we do needs to be done and filled with grace. It will be filled with grace and needs to be approached with love. In his, in his book, <clears throat> excuse me, A Hidden Wholeness, Welcoming the Soul and Weaving Community in a Wounded World, Robert J. Parker describes no, Parker Palmer describes circles of trust. He explores the idea of silence and laughter within a group context, which he calls silence and laughter, he calls a paradox. Circles of trust are places where the soul and the role resync. A few attributes of the circle of trust are, it forms the basis of community, it allows for a spacious and tolerant process. Circles of trust prevents us from becoming self-absorbent and self-referential and lessens self-deception. These circles are filled with seekers rather than experts. Because these are spacious circles, they encourage both silence and laughter. Paka Palmer says silence is scary for some. It makes one vulnerable when we stop making noise. We feel like we're not in control. Likewise, laughter also makes us feel vulnerable. 
because it often respond, comes in response to what we are thinking are flaws. But in creating a circle of trust, each group member is safe to be both silent and to laugh, allowing people to bring their total selves to the work. Every new beginning comes from others' beginnings in, says Seneca. We are at the beginning of an end of a significant era. The outgoing BOT managed the ending of the previous ministry. They held processes together while searching for a new minister. And now they will present a budget to help launch you into your next phase. The new team has new roles and dif different responsibility and different challenges. But their work is built on the end, the outgoing of the current BOT. This church is in the process of change. Change is a process that everyone manages differently, in different ways, in different timing. People are so complex. Change is so complicated. Living with ambiguity, living in the gray can be difficult for some. For some, it's hard to speak, hard to listen. It's hard to laugh. It's hard to be silent. It's hard to lead or it's hard to be led. Find their, their rhythm and the is the most crucial task for all new groups. Finding their place in the grace. Our task as a congregation is to be patient, to hold them in love. For everything, there is a season. This will be a season of change for us in this congregation. This change affects us all and will not be the responsibility of a few. This change must be held by many. Welcome to the gray area. May it be so, blessed be, Ashe, amen. time now for an offering to support the many programs and missions of our congregation. We ask you to be generous with your time, talent, and treasure. Your offerings keep our interconnected web alive. Please, as you are able, give in the sanctuary, through our website, or on the Tithely app, and know that we are grateful for all that you give and all that you do.
the people on this side of the okay. sanctuary can't know. really see. Can you see it now? <laughs> um, okay, let's sing our final hymn together. Um, please rise as you are willing and able um, for number 175 in the gray hymnal. I was just getting feedback um, from the sermon. Um, Susan um, Frenald, um says that she thought I was saying grace instead of graves. So maybe we're d dwelling in grace. I, I like that. Um, um, so I, I'm not going to take credit for that. I think that's a, a that's a great thing. The final blessing comes from Sarah Lambert. Go in peace, embraced by the light and warmth of our gathering. Go in love, ready again to struggle on. Go in beauty, shining forth like a lamp for freedom. Go in peace. Amen. Anguish the chalice, and please join us in saying the chalice extinguishing words. Carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again. forget please join us for coffee and snacks in the activities room and to talk about the budget and have any of your questions answered. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>